Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here with this Wednesday mountain weather update, and it is slim pickings now. Uh, this is radar across the west, and high pressure now firmly in control. The atmospheric river is over for the Pacific Northwest. A much drier pattern now for a lot of the west uh, with this ridge of high pressure until we bring in this cutoff low, and that'll help to kind of break down the high. And I'll explain that here in a second, but I mean, there's just basically nothing going on across the west. Now, up in the northeast, got a little departing snow, and then there, you can see the next clipper approaching uh, the Great Lakes, Michigan, Ohio, Indiana. That will make its way up into the northeast eventually. So potentially, I mean, you can see just a little bit of light snow across northern Vermont, some light accumulations today, and then you'll have to wait for the next clipper. Okay, let me show you water vapor satellite imagery this morning and just kind of give you the lay of the land. So on this, your oranges and reds are going to be your drier air aloft. Your moisture is going to be in the whites and the blues. So you've got a, a pretty big storm system right here and another one behind it. But this, this first storm system, let me find my green, all the moisture is going way up here into northern British Columbia and Alaska, even as far north as Alaska, the Northwest Territories. Um, so it's being totally directed around um, this entire area. Now, the, here's the reason for this. Let me just mark the, uh, the high pressure ridge. And wow, that is some seriously dry air. Look at those deep reds across California. So that high pressure ridge is setting right there. And, and what will happen is eventually this storm will go to the north, continuing up there, and then this extra energy will come in behind it and uh, start to help to uh, kind of break down this ridge of high pressure. And that will set up a much more active storm track as we get into late this weekend and most of next week. And I'll show you that on the jet stream forecast coming up here in a second. Um, let me just kind of take stock of where we're at now. I posted on my X account, uh, I put together this list yesterday, and it's 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 only six resorts, but it's kind of interesting to see where we stand right now as far as season totals. Alieska is approaching 500 inches. Um, I'm sure this storm system heading for Alaska right now will help. Timberline, Oregon, 374. J Peak, Vermont, and I even mentioned J Peak continues to do well. I mean... J Peak is 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 beating out some of the very biggest and snowiest resorts of the West at 350. Jackson Hole, I think you're up to 353 now. You had three inches overnight, um, three or four inches. But I mean that's amazing. Alta Utah 348 and Winter Park Colorado. Of all the resorts um, in Colorado, I believe Winter Park has the most snow of the major resorts in Colorado. So pretty interesting pattern. And you know, when you look way down the road, this is for that San Francisco Bay corridor up to the Sierra. You know, is there another atmospheric river coming? The answer is no. I mean, when you, I've got this out 16 days, integrated vapor transport, and it's just noise. It's, it's a non-AR environment, all noise through uh, potentially 314 of March. So while there are going to be storms that move through California, it doesn't look like they're going to have atmospheric river capacity or a contribution of any sort. Okay, let's go to my bullet points here. So we've got the drier pattern settling into the Pacific Northwest today and tomorrow especially as that storm kind of goes to the north into Canada and Alaska. Southwest, you've got this big high pressure ridge. The next storm system, there's a cutoff that comes in, helps to set the stage. And then 3, 2, 3, 4, 3, 2, 3, 3, 3, 4, 3, 5 will be a storm system, maybe two. That should grab some colder air and pull it down into the lower 48. And then there's another storm system behind it. It still looks like 3, 6, and 3, 7. But I'll tell you, the amounts are not terribly impressive considering how many different storms there are that's going to roll through. Uh, here's my snow timeline. Best odds of snow for Big Sky, the Wasatch, Tetons, Colorado, Interior, BC, the Pacific Northwest, Tahoe, and the Northeast. Uh, and I say that, and I showed you that integrated, I showed you the AR forecast. So whatever's coming in doesn't look like it's going to be juiced up. I mean, these are going to be storm systems, but that's probably about it. 
Um, in the Wasatch, you've got some light to moderate accumulations, afternoon 3-3 through 3-5. Tetons light, 3-3 through 3-5, maybe moderate. Colorado, man, it is, it's light initially. And then light to moderate, 3-3, 3-4. Your heaviest snow potentially is on 3-6, once we get some colder air in there. Uh, interior BC, it's going to be a long wait. It looks fairly light, along with the Pacific Northwest. It looks light. Tahoe, light to moderate, a couple of shots there with each storm system. And the northeast, it, it actually looks pretty good. Um, light to moderate and then a heavy shot coming 3.5 and 3.6. Um, okay, let me uh, drill down just a little bit here and uh, go to, um, I believe this is Alta. Yep, so this is Alta, Utah, the forecast mediagram. Effective about 9,000 feet. And it's what you would expect, given everything that I've said, with high pressure, no AR environment, um, it's bone dry. All the way through early Saturday, March the 1st. There's nothing here. It's just warm. Um, <clears throat> 23 degrees. Uh, forecast high today at 9,000. And it shoots way up to 34 on Thursday, the 27th, up to 35 on Friday, and above freezing on Saturday as well. Um, and you might recall I did mention these these higher snow levels on my X account a couple of days ago for Colorado. I mean, we're looking at, um, you know, 10, 11, 12,000 foot freezing levels, maximum freezing levels in Colorado into the weekend. 12,000 feet. That's, that's exceptionally warm. Um, so that is, that is going to be, um, that's Alta, Utah, again, up there in Little Cottonwood Canyon at about eight to 9,000 feet. Let me show you, um, so this is Jenny Lake, Wyoming. Um, so for Jenny Lake, this is effective about 86, 8,700 feet, roughly. Um, you can see it right there on this particular model. It had a little tiny skiff of snow coming through early this morning, uh, a quarter of an inch, and then that's it. It's totally dry through Saturday, March the 1st. So the ridge of high pressure is doing its, its, its best to uh, put the damper on things here. 21 degrees for the forecast high today up there at about 86, 8,700 feet. 32 tomorrow, 35 on, on Friday and back into the middle 30s, 35 on Saturday. So that is some really warm stuff for sure. Okay, let me take a look at the pattern here. Okay, so this is going to be the forecast jet stream. Let me start it from the top here. Um, so we'll start it today. And what I'm looking for here are the brighter colors. I, I really want to see the yellows, the oranges, and the reds on this. That's going to be your stronger winds up at jet stream level about 30,000 feet. Essentially, this is the storm track. A couple of things to notice today. The, the polar jet, the northern jet's arcing way to the north. That's bottling up all the cold air and, and <clears throat> allowing a lot of the warm air with the high pressure to settle in across the, the lower 48. Um, but look over the Pacific. There's a lot of jet action out there. Okay, here we go into Thursday. <clears throat> you can see the cutoff low coming, approaching California, but massive ridging across the west. And Friday's pretty much the same. The, the cutoff is starting to move on shore in California. Very warm across the west. All right, here's Saturday. Uh, cutoff starts to move in. Look to the west. We start to see a more powerful jet emerge over the Pacific. Then, here we go on Sunday. Things start to really shift. So the jet flattens a little bit. The cutoff low does its thing. It helps to break down the high pressure. Now we have more of a west to east jet coming off the Pacific. It's going to grab a little bit of cold air and move it into the west. Um, here's Monday. So there's a storm system right there, Monday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, moving through the interior. And there's more behind it. There's an additional area of low pressure coming off the Pacific. So that's a pretty good flow here, um, all the way into Thursday, in fact. So things do turn much stormier. As far as precipitation goes, um, okay, here's the forecast radar and satellite. Let me start this from the beginning. So we'll start this this morning, um, and again, there's just a little a skiff 
of snow kind of sliding through parts of uh, Wyoming and Montana. And you can see it in white. That's the white, the blues are going to be your snow. Okay, so here we go. There's this afternoon. There's Thursday morning. I mean, guys, there's just nothing across the West for days. This is Friday morning. There's Friday afternoon. Here comes the cutoff low into California. You can see a little bit of snow around Mammoth. Um, and then it slides into the interior. And it's basically, it, all it really does, This the life cycle of this cutoff is, is to basically break down the high. And all the most of the precip evaporates. But look to California. Here comes a bigger storm system. There's Sunday afternoon, Sunday night. More widespread snow for California, Nevada, um, Oregon, parts of Washington, Idaho, and moving in. This is a big day right here, Monday afternoon. Um, snow for the Wasatch, the Tetons, Idaho, Montana, the Sierra. Developing, eventually, there it comes into Colorado with a cold front. So much better snow, especially the deep blues. That's where you're going to see the better snows. So you've got snow in Utah, Wyoming, Idaho, Montana, Colorado, northern New Mexico. Uh, and this is Tuesday afternoon. There's Wednesday morning. Next storm loads up and gets ready to move in at that point. All right, so let me do this in two different phases. Um, here's my snow forecast between today and Saturday, uh, Sunday, the 2nd of March. So all the way through the weekend, essentially. And there just isn't much of anything. It's very, very light. Slim pickings. I mean, I put ones in a lot of places that are truly under an inch. Um, a lot of Colorado, Wyoming, Utah, Idaho, Montana. In fact, some of the better accumulation does not come until th late on 3-2. Um, and then, of course, the pattern shifts after 3-2. And like I showed you with the jet and all the new action starts coming in 3-3 three, three through you know most of next week. But it's going to be a tough, uh, tough rest of the week with high pressure. And even Saturday and Sunday, I mean, you know, there's really not going to be any big powder. Now, looking further down the road, this will take us all the way out to 3-6. So through at least half of next week. And there's a huge change here. Um, with probably two different storm systems and a cold front, you can see the amounts of snow that are possible next week, um, with the brighter pinks representing 6 to 12 inches plus. And there's a lot of that, from the Sierra to parts of uh, Utah to parts of the central to northern mountains of Colorado to the Tetons to Idaho, Montana, Pacific Northwest. So there are better days ahead. It's just going to take a while to get there. Um, okay, let me show you my northeast forecast. This is all of today through Sunday. So it'll take us through the weekend. And there's actually some decent snow accumulation here. I've got 6 to 10 inches of accumulation across a lot of New York State, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. Um, lesser amounts across Massachusetts and, and, uh, uh, and, and lower uh, southern uh, parts of New York State. So there's some decent snow in the Northeast. And, and, you know, when you look at the timing of it again, light this afternoon, moderate tomorrow with that approaching clipper, moderate on 3-1, and then heavier 3-5 and 3-6. So guys, we'll end on the big Western map here. This is, again, today through Sunday. Not a lot to be had there. Tough stretch. But then better days are ahead as we move through next week. All the accumulation starts to pick up with colder air moving in. Guys, thanks for tuning in here. Always appreciate it. Take care and have a great day.